Hey guys, and welcome to my Sims 2 Let's Play. So, I've wanted to do this for a while, where I just play The Sims 2. I haven't played in a while, and I have and I haven't. I mean, like, properly played it, played through every expansion, played every stuff pack, you know, played the game how, you know, I would have played the game when I was younger. I grew up playing The Sims 2. Um, so, yeah. So The Sims 2 came out, I mean, today, 16 years ago, crazy, this game is now 16 years old, um, and, you know, it's great, it's just so good, I love The Sims 2, and I hope you guys enjoy this series, because I have been dying to do this for so long. And I, I mean, I completely forgot that when you install The Sims 2, you get this little game that you pop up, and it's called Match Your Sim, or Grow Your Sims. And you play this, uh, you play some trivia about The Sims, and you play Snap with The Sims icons. And your basic, your goal is to basically grow your Sims and start a new generation, which I obviously had was able to do because I played it so much. <laughs> um, but we're finally in the game, and it loaded surprisingly fast because it normally loaded really slow for me. But The Sims 2 shipped with three pre-made neighborhoods, the first being Pleasant View, which is a continuation of The Sims 1, 25 years in the future. The second being Strange Town, which is, you know, showing off the more spooky side of The Sims 2 with aliens and ghosts. And then the third being Veronaville, which is inspired by Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, and really, like, shows off the more drama side of The Sims 2. So families that have been brought back, the Goth family, famous for the disappearance of Bella Goth, the Newbie family, represented by Bob and Betty's daughter Brandy, a Daniel and Jennifer Pleasant, who are the kids of Jeff and Diane, this is where Daniel is with his family, and John Burb, who is the son of Brad and Tiffany, who is also married to Jennifer Pleasant. So the creator Sim in The Sims 2 was greatly improved from the original as well, offering life stages like toddler, child, teenager, adult and elder for the first time, obviously your Sims now age, and having the four different skin tones to select, uh, choose from, obviously custom ones were available, and your Sims actually gaining and losing weight. And like everything else in The Sims 2, The Sims themselves were directly customizable, whereas in The Sims 1 you had to select head and body to choose from. You could now cho change everything about your Sims, their hair color, their eye color, um, their facial features, obviously what makeup they have on, costume makeup, glasses, facial hair, you name it. And obviously, you know, now we have The Sims 4 and it's more revolutionary than the sliders, but you have to think back in 2004 after having presets to choose from. This was, you know, amazing and being able to change clothing without having to have presets was nice. <laughs> and for the first time, you could actually change every outfit that your Sims wore. So formal, underwear, pajamas, swimwear and athletic. You couldn't do this within The Sims 1 without the use of the Hot Date expansion pack. The personality system in The Sims 2 was very similar to how The Sims 1 was. Obviously, you have a select amount of points to put into various different categories, and those categories would then give your Sim a defined trait. And obviously, choosing a astrological sign changes this, and however many points you put in one will affect the astrological signs as well. Aspirations were introduced for the first time in The Sims 2, and there are five distinct ones. Fortune is about making money and marrying rich Sims. Knowledge is about learning and meeting aliens. Family is about having a massive family, marrying, getting grandkids. Uh, romance is about having multiple lovers at once, various different woohoo partners. And popularity is about making as many best friends as possible and becoming famous in your neighborhood. And obviously build mode was improved from The Sims 1 as well. You could now build up to four floors. Here you can see I'm building a house in Vronaville using the Tudor house uh, style. That was obviously very big in Vronaville. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, but build mode was great. I mean, this house isn't good, I rushed it, but this is basically how my houses used to look. I used to love playing in Vronaville, it's the first neighborhood I ever played in, so I do have a lot of nostalgia to Vronaville, and I just loved building in The Sims 2, and I think it's what really sparked my love of building in The Sims, and then obviously moving on to more advanced games like The Sims 3 and 4 now. Um, but anyway, without further ado, let's get into the game. So I had originally thought that I was going to make a family and then build a house in this video, but making that introduction to The Sims 2 really, like, hit me in the feels, the nostalgia, um, and I feel like we should play the tutorial 
like the first time I played The Sims 2, obviously, I had to learn to play. Um, I was very excited to play it and, you know, obviously, you know, clicked on the neighborhoods and I was like, oh wait, there's a learn to play, so let's do that. But before we do, before we do that, there is one thing I completely forgot about, which is the ability to create your own neighborhoods right in the game without needing a third party uh, program. Uh, like the Sims 3 Create a World tool. And, you know, this just really shows the customization of The Sims 2, and you can create as many neighborhoods as you want, I think. Or there might be a limit, maybe, I don't know. Because obviously the game's not re uh, running every neighborhood in one save f in, in one save file like it is in The Sims 4. Each you know individual lot within the neighborhood is its own save file, and it's just it's cool. <laughs> okay, so obviously with the tutorial we have part one and part two of the basics, which are the gameplay tutorials, and we have a building a home tutorial, and then we have beyond the basics, new gameplay, and new building tools. I won't be doing the build ones because they take a while, <laughs> not gonna lie. I remember doing them and, you know, I'm pretty sure I just left halfway through because it's like, I know how to build, it's fine, you just build a house. Oh, I was wrong and I came back to do it. <laughs> but we should definitely check out part one and part two and maybe part three down here. So this is Tutorial Joe and he is the fictional son of Bob and Betty. So welcome to Tutorial Joe's house. He's agreed to show you some of the basics of the world of The Sims. You're in good hands, so sit back and relax. By the way, you can exit the tutorial under the options menu at any time. Click next to start the tutorial. So let's meet Tutorial Joe. Follow the red arrow and press the zoom in button in the control panel. So obviously this is the zoom in. This is like as close as you can get. Too close, so you can back up using the zoom out. And then this is as far as you can get. Click next. And there are several ways to scroll the screen. So obviously you have edge scrolling, like in every other Sims game. You've got the right mouse button, and also the rotate buttons, which I don't think are in The Sims 4, they might be. They might not even have been in The Sims 3, but obviously this is how The Sims 1 camera, oh my god, this is how The Sims 1 camera was. Uh, you can also rotate using the left and right arrow keys. Um, if you have a mouse wheel, obviously, you know, it's just the stuff we know. Just thought I would refresh myself on The Sims 2 a little bit. Uh, your mouse wheel can also change the angle, so... Obviously, because The Sims 2, the first game to be in 3D, you couldn't do this in The Sims 1. <laughs> um, you can also tilt by pressing Control right No. Wait, control plus. Wait. Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> uh, then we have live mode. Live turns on the simulation. This is where you control the Sims. This is the only mode in which time passes in the game. All other modes, buy, build, story, and options will pause the game. Then uh, this is where the members of the household are. And, you know, now you're going to learn how to control Joe. Move the cursor to an empty spot on the floor and click left and then go here. Perfect. The Sims can be commanded to interact with most objects in the game. Watch for the cursor to change on the object that have interactions at this time. So we can go command Joe to turn on the radio. Uh, when your Sim has an action, you'll see an action at the top left of the screen. You can click the icon to cancel the action. While Sims can choose some of these actions on their own, your guidance can help keep them in a good mood. You can tell the mood by the sim or the colour of the indicator above their head or their thumbnail or image in the background. So if that changes to red, we know he's in a bad mood. So this is the needs panel. The bar on the left of the needs panel shows the mood of the sim. This is this bar here and as it goes up and down we can see uh, Joe's mood increase and decrease. The needs below show the different things that add up to determine Joe's mood. So obviously we have hunger, comfort, ladder, energy, fun, social hygiene and environment. Uh, let's increase Joe's hygiene, find the shower, and then click check the shower. Uh, notice the hygiene bar. The green arrows show the need is improving, and Joe's mood is getting better. A sim in a bad mood may have trouble building relationships or earning money. Mouse over the needs below each one will show you examples of objects. Obviously hunger, you can use a stove, a fridge, or, a, a or you can order a pizza. Comfort is obviously for sitting or sleeping. 
uh, bladder, you know, for toddlers using a toddler potty or using the toilet, since can actually pee themselves if you, you know, let it decrease further enough. Uh, energy can be restored using the bed or drinking coffee. Fun can, you know, since can have fun watching TV, playing pinball, video games, darts. Social is interacting with other sims. Uh, sims are very social creatures, so they do need to talk. Hygiene is, you know, brushing your teeth, washing your hands, you know, taking showers. An environment is how they feel about their home and how decorated it is. It's up to you to provide for the objects, so we go to buy mode and good. Now you're in buy mode. This uh, time has stopped for now. This is why you will come spend Joe's hard earned money. The objects in the catalogue may be sorted by, or can be sorted by function, room, or in collections. So we have by function, by room, and collections, and each expansion pack added its own collections. And we have ultra modern, central Asian, modern, designer, colonial, quaint, club, art nouveau, Moroccan, and value. And we have obviously the different themes of The Sims 2, which I used to love building in the Moroccan theme. Um, so let's go to the comfort sort. Within the category of objects, uh, within the category, objects are grouped by type. Comfort includes groups like dining chairs and beds. Find a dining chair that Joe might like, so I'm going to place this one down. Uh, good, place, place the chair. So we just place it there. Notice another chair will appear. For some objects like dining chairs and countertops, by mode assumes you would like to place another. To cancel, press the escape key. To rotate, you obviously you click and drag the, op the direction you'd like it to face. And remember, you can come, always come back to by mode to purchase new objects or rearrange existing objects in the home. Now go back to live mode. Uh, now that we're back in live mode, this is, time is passing. Your sims are growing up and getting older. The age meter down here shows the current phase of a sim's life. Mouse over to see how many days until the next age transition. So Joe is becoming an elder in 23 days. Uh, and obviously you can see that he's already been a toddler, child and teenager. And the only life stage he has left is elder after adult. Um, we can find out more about a sim in the Simology panel. Uh, this is where you find out their personality and their current fitness level. Uh, mouse over the personality traits so we can see that Joe is in between sloppy and neat. He's a bit more shy than outgoing. Uh, he's more lazy. He is in between serious and playful and the same with grouchy and nice. And the new thing with The Sims 2 are the, is the memory system. The memories panel documents The Sims collection of big life events. Memories might be good or bad and if it's a a huge memory like growing up or getting married there will actually be a little cutscene uh, to depict it and it does remind me of like a soap opera or something it's, it's really cute Joe has a bad memory of getting fired from his job without a job Joe has little opportunity to make money obviously you can still paint and I think that was actually the only other way to earn money without a job in The Sims 2 was painting so you can go have him read the newspaper to find a job and he will find a job. I think it's the athletic career that is scripted. I'm pretty sure. I don't quite remember. I just remember him always having the athletic career. Uh, let's just see. So they will actually open a newspaper to find a job. Yes, yeah, the athletic career. Let's see. Yep, there's only the athletic career, so we can take job. And now uh, we have a job in the jobs and a skills and career panel. Here's the information about Joe's career, as well as his skill ratings, which is important for job promotions, mouse over their work hours, find out when the carpool will arrive. So obviously the carpool arrives at two o'clock and he works from three to nine. Um, and this is where his skills are. So you have 10 skill points in each from cooking to cleaning. There are some hidden skills later on in the game, like dance and karaoke, but in the base game, I don't think there are any hidden skills. These are the only skills that you can learn. Uh, there might be some, I'm not, I don't quite remember, but there are like in apartment life and free time, there are like fire safety and parenting. 
these like one level skills that you can learn. Uh, let's have Joe build his body skill because that is what he needs to do for work when there is a little ring around a skill. That is what you need for a promotion. You also have your job performance. He's currently have he currently has average job performance, and this is how you know if your sim's gonna get promotion or demoted or fired. And obviously they have family friends and some careers require you to have a certain amount of friends. So obviously we can see the meter up here is showing the current skill gain. This has been in every Sims game. So Joe will be getting his first body skill point. And there we go. And congratulations, Joe has gained a body skill point. You have completed basic the basic tutorial. So we now get to go check out uh, part two of the basics. Okay, so over here on part two, we learn how to take care of a small family and learn about social interactions and relationships. And for the first time, we get to meet Joe's wife, Jane. So here we are, we're back in the tutorial family and they have a nicer house now. It's no longer the newbie's house from The Sims 1. Uh, welcome, tutorial Joe and Jane are excited to show you more about the world of The Sims. You can exit at any time at the options panel. Let's meet the members of the household. Click next to continue. So obviously we still have the sim chooser down here. Clicking the selected sim will center them. Uh, notice the indicator above Joe's head. You know, this is still early The Sims. So this is before the plum bob was really known as the plum bob. Uh, this shows that he is the selected character. All personal details below mood, career and personality will show Joe's values. Click on an object so we can have him go play with the remote control cult, which is actually an NPC. <laughs> I never knew this, but in like the debug menus, you can click spawn the remote control. And this is actually a sim. This is a sim. <laughs> uh, good. Now click once on Jane's thumbnail to select her. And notice the indicator that was above Joe's head is now over Jane's. All personal details below will now reflect Jane. Have Jane use an object on the lot. You know what? We will go have her sit on the lounge chair. There are several ways to change the active character. Another way is with the mouse, so we can right click on Joe and it will come back to Joe. That's right, uh, Joe is selected. Another way is to select character by pressing the space bar and it goes back to Jane. So Sims interact with each other the way they interact with objects. While Jane is selected, you can left click on Joe to make her interact with him. So we can go give him a romantic kiss. We can have him stop playing with the RC car and we will see them fall in love, probably. I think they're already in love, actually. Yeah, no, they're married. Oh, no, we might... We will see them fall in love, probably. Yes, they now have a crush on each other. You can see how the sim felt about the interaction by watching the relationship icon above their heads. A plus sign means the relationship is improved. Negative means it's deteriorated. Try another. So we will actually argue, and we can see the relationship deteriorate. Probably. Uh, it appears their relationship... Oh, see, there we go. Their relationship has deteriorated. I feel bad, so I'm going to have her serenade. So we can see the... Oh, in this panel. <laughs> uh, when your sims meet new people in the neighborhood, they will appear in the relationship panel. So obviously she only knows Joe right now. Clicking the image of a person in a relationship brings up the info and the state of the relationship. Uh, mouse over the relationship meters for more information about types of relationships. So this seems... so. This is Jane's opinion on Joe. This sim means the world to me. There's no one I'd rather spend my life with. Sure, we might have ups and downs, but we treat each other well. We be together for a long time. They are married slash joined. And then the relationship types that we have are engaged, married, in love, have a crush, going steady, best friends, friend and enemies. And of course, future expansions added more to this, like best uh, BFFs and uh, pets. So now that we know how to direct our sims fill their needs and earn money. Uh, what do your Sims want? So the wants panel was the first major thing added to The Sims 2, including fears. The aspiration meter shows how well a Sim is fulfilling their goals. Uh, completing a task that the Sim wants will send the meter up. However, realize a fear and the meter will drop down. You can uh, learn more about this uh, wants and fears in new gameplays. And this is the end of part two. So we will go over to part three. Okay, so we are 
can now go to Beyond the Basics with new gameplay. New players and returning players alike will enjoy a tour of some of the new gameplay and controls of The Sims 2, learn about The Sims' aspirations and familiarise yourselves with their wants and fears. Okay, so we are back and tutorial Joe and Jane have yet another new house to show us. This is actually not the worst house in The Sims 2. There are some that are so much worse, <laughs> but this is actually all right. So tutorial and Jane, Joe and Jane are back to show you to show us some more tips and tricks. Uh, you'll probably know the basics, so let's jump into the good stuff. So obviously we can exit before you worry about the big stuff. Okay, we don't need to worry about this. Okay, so we better move on. So obviously the age meter, we've done that. The Okay, let's go back to the wants and fears. Okay, here we go. Satisfying Joe's lifetime goals start with the things he wants and fears. Satisfy a want and the green aspiration meter goes up. Realize a fear and however it will drop down. You can click on these wants for more information. So Joe wants to earn some money. He wants to earn 100 simoleons and this is actually a power want. He wants to get a job in the medicine and criminal career. And he currently fears the repo man coming, the death of Jane and having a fire. Jane wants to buy a telescope costing at least 500 simoleons, uh, get a job in the science career or the medicine career, gain a skill and she fears having a fire, the death of Joe and getting sick. And you can lock any of these wants. So if you have a power one, which is symbolized by this with a starburst behind it, you can lock it in if you want to complete that. Okay, when you satisfy a one, a new one will take its place. Wants and fears are a result of the decisions you make every day and help steer the course of Joe's lifetime. It's all up to you. And wants and fears really make the Sims feel different. Okay, a one can expire and drop away. A guy can change his mind, can't he? You may decide to lock in a one. This is what we just did. So we locked in that one. So every Sim has something that he really, uh, that really motivates him, like popularity, family, or romance, that kind of stuff. For Joe, it's fortune. Joe's aspiration has big influence on his wants and fears. So if we mouse over, we can see that his aspiration level is currently the big cheese. Um, and that changes depending whether it goes up or down. You can see that Jane, who desires knowledge, and Joe want different things out of life. In order to reach the highest levels of success, you have to pay attention to their individual desires. Sims are not all cut from the same mold, you know. So when you satisfy a one, you get little aspiration points and these help in various different ways. So we have the money tree, the noodle soother, the smart milk, cool shades, the en enigmatic energizer, thinking cap, the simvac, the love tub and the elixir of life. These all have different effects on the Sims depending on their aspiration level. You know, we'll come to explore a lot of these throughout like the cool shades they help with gaining social interactions. The smart milk helps toddlers uh, gain skills faster. The money tree obviously gives you money. And all, all of these are for Sims of different, you know, aspirations. Notice time is paused. So also, once you climb a career path, you also get career rewards and any careers added in the future also have their own career rewards. And this is also where the inventory is later on. When you satisfy a one, aspiration points are added to the aspiration rewards catalog. Here you can purchase items that fulfill your Sims challenging wants. Some items have limited use, even unpleasant side effects. So things like the love tub, for example, if you are in a bad re aspiration level and you try romantic interactions, then, you know, it can go horribly wrong. So if we click on the relationship panel again, uh, friends, family, housemates, the relationship panel sorts out who's who and tells you what's standing in the relationship. So we can sort by family only, friends only, household only, and all. And it's set to all by default. You can also check on the genealogy in the family tree and see your sims family so we have peggy jones and roger jones and we can see the grandparents and then the spouse so here is bob and betty newbie and then we've got bunny bill dorothy and pop these are all fake sims by the way none of these are canon <laughs> so we are now done with that so obviously we have the memories again Jane remembers having her first kiss, getting engaged, getting married, 
burning, uh, burning mac and cheese and passing out. So this is it for the tutorial. So, you know, it only is here to teach you about the introduction, about the introduction to The Sims 2 and how the game runs. It's time to make memories of your own in the neighborhood of The Sims. Good luck with your Sims and have fun. So this is going to do it for this first part. When we come back, I will probably have already made The Sims. I think we'll probably play in Pleasant View, just because it is the continuation of The Sims 1 and it has all the, you know, Sims 1 families continued. Not that I don't like Strange Town and Veronaville. Like I said, Veronaville was my first neighborhood. I have so much nostalgia to that, and Strange Town is my favorite neighborhood from The Sims 2. I have plans for them in the future. Don't worry, we will see your favorite Sims, you know. But this is going to be it, and we will be introduced to the new family when we come back. So if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps my channel out. And I can't believe I've been on YouTube a year now and it's taken me this long to actually do this. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.